Greetings, everyone. Hugh Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Monday Night Must See TV with the Hudson Valley Squares. We got a nice crew going here tonight for this uh, episode <laughs> all about music for spring. We're actually calling it Albums That Scream Bring On Spring, right? So these are the albums. We've each picked out an album that we really like to listen to when we're saying goodbye to, to winter welcoming in spring warmer weather the grass is starting to turn green the birds are chirping the flowers and trees are budding all that good stuff maybe we turn the windows down in the car maybe we open the windows of the house turn off the heat before we start using the ac right so i've asked everybody to pick out one album let me introduce the crew we got the ladies in the house today lynn versace's here Ooh. karen la preziosa's here hey uh -huh. ralph is, ralph tambora's here craig kaminsky's here <laughs> And of course, it wouldn't be a Hudson Valley Squares episode without the man himself, Mr. Ryan Scow, the man who's been uh, visiting the earth, seeing metal everywhere, unearthing Sea of Tranquility fans <laughs> everywhere he goes. Look Mostly at Texas. But... There you go. I That's... love Texas. Texas I is do the I. reason. <laughs> I do. I love her. Everything's bigger in Texas, too. That's right. So they say. I don't know. That's right. <laughs> So we're going to go one trip around here and everybody's got their album they're going to talk about. So uh, we're going to have Mr. Kaminsky represent okay. Pennsylvania go first. Craig, what is your album that screams bring on spring? All right. Thank you. And uh, hi, Lynn. Hi, Karen. Always good to see you. <laughs> but uh, so this uh, my selection and uh, I'm a you know a metal metal and hard rock fan and some hair metal, too. But uh the what some people may not may not really know is that I'm really into the whole you know no shirt no shoes no pants vibe you know of the of the you know warm weather and and you know and everything and uh I really I dig the vibe of the whole you know it's five o'clock somewhere uh you know the attitude yeah. and everything and with uh you know, I mean, and where the, you know the music, <laughs> like the music of, uh, you know, uh, Saint Jimmy Buffet, you know, and, uh, and, I, you know, and I'm, and I'm sorry, I I get emotional when I you know if I talk about him, you know, but uh, you know it's you know it's sad that he's gone, and and uh, but I love the the vibe of, of music like that, and when it starts getting warmer, you know, it's the uh, you know you you'd like to hear music like that. In addition to the that vibe, I also really kind of dig, uh, you know, new country. And a lot of people, you know, say, you know, new country may be, um, it's like bad Southern rock, you know, or something. And I, 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 dis, I disagree with that. Check that. I strenuously disagree with that, with, with that. And uh, so my selection for today and... Uh, we also love uh, uh, live albums, you know, like like you know, like we all do. But so my selection, I went with Kenny Chesney's Live. Uh, this is from about you know fifteen ish years years ago, I, I believe. You know when this came out, and uh, you know this is a single, and uh, it, it's a crime that this is not a double or even a triple. You know, because when this, when this, there's only 14 songs on this, you know, I just, I want more, you know, when I hear this, it's got a lot of acoustic guitars and a lot of, you know, mandolins, mandolins, I, I really believe are the most underutilized of all the string instruments, you know, and I'd like to hear a lot more of it, but, um, you know, just has a lot of, you know, laid back and, you know, fun vibes to it. And uh, it, there's it's you know there's there's some there a lot of positivity and upbeat songs i mean there's there's an added bonus on this that uh, about halfway through there's a there's a duet uh that's called when the sun goes down it's a duet with uncle cracker you know and he he sings you know a a, a very popular song that was out some years ago called follow me you know and i really enjoy hearing that when i'm going through the frozen section, you know, of my, of my local store. So, you know, it's really cool to hear him, you know, to hear, you know, him on this CD as well, along with Kenny, just, you know, belting it out. And, you know, just finally, you know, the last thing, you know, the, uh, the last song on, on a lot of live albums is always, you know, it's a real big deal. I mean, it's uh, 
where you got songs like, you know, shoot, shoot, and uh, let uh, let there be rock, and uh, the rocker makes no difference. You know, from Pat Travers' album, and just some Running Free, Tyrant. You know, some great great songs like that. Well, let me tell you something. Those songs are nothing compared to the final song on the, on this CD. And that's a song called She Thinks My Tractor's Sexy. I, I love that song. And it is, it, it quite possibly, no, no, it, it is. It, this it, That is the best li uh, final song on any live album that I've ever heard. It's fantastic. Uh, as soon as it gets done, I want to play it again. You know, I mean, I, I, I celebrate his entire catalog and I just, you know, really love this album and it really gets me in the mood for spring and, and the summer as well. So uh, that's my that's my pick. It's uh, Kenny Chesney live. So that's like his closing anthem. It's uh, it's a fantastic song. It makes me rethink how I, you know, how I live, uh, you know, with uh, making you know, me tear up a little. With, over what I, yeah. And, and <laughs> there's a little drop. You know, my my okay. yard's not even conducive to a tractor. But I would get one anyway because because of this, because of this song and it's uh, you know you know she thinks my tractor's sexy and it's it's awesome. Yeah, I think we should ship in and buy you a tractor now because tractors really? are sexy. well they're expensive. So I mean, so it's you know, but you know, tractors you know, are pretty sexy though. All right, you can steal one safe. from my neighbor. You can just park out on your front lawn, Craig. A lot of facts being spoken. It, here it, it, yeah, I mean, it's you know, I'd, I'd rather have the tractor <laughs> than the snowblower. You know, so this make this uh, this you know gets you agreed. Gets you, I can agree you, with that. Gets you in the mood for that. So uh, yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's just great. I can't I can't say enough good things about it. So well, that's, that's a that's statement. My... I tell you, props that's to Kenny. Awesome. He's got a pretty hot looking Gibson Les Paul on the front cover. That uh... he does. Yeah, and uh, my favorite I mean, I'm, guitar. I'm, he he has a he has a shirt on here. I don't think he does that all all the time. I mean, he he plays a lot of state. He does stadiums. Uh, Sammy Hager was even one of the opening acts on one of his tours. So, I mean, he, he has a lot of crossover appeal. Count me as one of them. So, you know, it's, uh, I just, I dig, I dig the whole vibe, you know, the whole, the whole attitude, uh, you know, of, of, uh, of him and, and guys like, you know, uh, St. Jimmy. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, wow. All right. Interesting. Wow. Things there. Awesome. Getting ready for spring, rocking with spring. All right. Lynn, curious to hear what you're oh. Hi, everybody. It's been forever since I've seen you all. It has. It has. I know. Too long. I really missed you guys. I did. Yeah. And I'm sorry that I'm in bed because I have to, I woke up really early and my life's changed a little bit. So I'm not up as late as I used to. So I apologize just a wee bit for that. Um, You know, so with Scream Spring, Summer, all that stuff, actually... Ryan, you and Nick are the ones really to blame for my next pick because, you know, when you hang out with these guys, you talk to these guys and, you know, you miss them so much and they turning on to new music and Karen's like this freaking metal chick. I mean, I'm metal, but she's like really metal. So I'm like, I got to get in with these guys. These guys are like killing me with the music. And I you know a lot of it I've never heard before. So, you know, they schooled me on some things. And uh, it's Norwegian black metal. And so my best friend, Linda, is actually Norwegian. She's actually, I swear to God. Um, yeah, her cousins actually just came from Norway. And so she's, and we always talk about all the time, we're like, we got to go to freaking Norway, you know. The guys over there are probably significantly hotter. I don't know, but. I, They're really I tall. Yeah. I like tall. It. There you go. Everybody there is really, there really tall. And, and my new vibe is like six foot or taller even though I'm a midget, but yeah, my whole new thing is like six foot or better. Or you, it, it's not even a thing. <laughs> so, um, Gorgoroth, it's a Norwegian black metal band. These guys turned me on to them, and holy shit, my mind was blown. Literally, um, it just you know I know a lot of people listen to this when it's cold because they're from Norway and the whole snow thing or whatever. It, you know what? It gets me on fire. It just makes me want to light my fire pit. To me, it screams warm weather. It gets me head banging. Um, it makes me feel like I'm in the fiery pits of hell, you know, like, which is cool for metal. That's what you want to feel like, you know? So, um, I mean, it just, it, it does. It makes my life crazy. And and I, I need a little bit of craziness right now, you know? Like, I love the priests and all that stuff and all those things that you probably think I would normally pick. 
that stuff is great. But when you turn this music on, it's under the sign of hell. These guys turned me on to that record. And holy shit, it starts off. And you know the drumming, it starts off with, I was blown out of the water. I was like, okay, this is my jam. It's the revelation of doom. Like, it starts so strong that it just puts you in this crazy, uh, the mood for summers and barbecues and fire pits. And like I said, I wanted to throw the football around. Like, it just gets you psyched. The music's just off the hook. I love that. Um, Blood stains the circle. The drums on this one, high energy, just crazy. And again, you guys know how much I love drums, and the music is just nuts, right? Um, that also is another one you could throw the football around too. It just gets me psyched. <laughs> but I tell you, the right of infernal invocation, and I had to write these names down because I don't remember them. I don't even remember the name of priest songs for half the. Uh, but the right of infernal invocation, seriously, like. I can picture just chilling out by my fire pit. Like it almost like you want to summon the people that have gone before us, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, it's a really cool song with like a, it's, it's kind of like the devil's calling you, you know, that torn between good and evil, you know? So it's like, I got this angel on my shoulder, but his side's kind of like, Hey, little girl, <laughs> you know, come over here. Um, yeah. It's like primal and evil. Right? And I don't know. It's just kind of hot really. So that for me really screamed warm weather, head banging. So thanks to Ryan Scow, thanks to Nick, thanks to my girl Karen, just for you guys turning me on. And even the cat, like you guys all, you guys get me going on this new stuff that I've never heard. And it steps me out of my comfort zone. For the music is, like I said, at first the vocals, I was like, mm, and then just, I don't know, it just got to me. So this is it. This is what I'm calling it the Gorgoroth, the Norwegian black metal under the sign of hell. There you go. Wow. Cool. What a choice. Right. Know that album well. Little little be ready to uh start burning some churches before you know it, right? I know. Well, well, I'm already burning sage. Everyone <laughs> needs a hobby. There you go. <laughs> All right. Karen. Wow. How about you? Karen. Well, you know, when I was younger, um, I had a real big chip on my shoulder and a uh, real attitude problem and very cynical and a little bit on the pessimistic side. And, um, you know, there was a certain band that just like, just made me smile and feel positive and uh, just got me going for, for the warm weather. And that band was Starship. And the record is Knee deep in the hoopla. I know wow. you guys can't see it very well. There you go. Knee oh, deep yeah. in the hoopla. And you got to think about it. We've all been like knee deep in the hoopla at one point. It's just so much hype and everything. But when I heard the opening track, um, We Built This City, it it just was so like fun. And I thought the keyboards really complimented uh the melody and Bernie Taupin wrote the lyrics and, you know, Grace Slick, like she really came into her own. Like she really grew up and you could see like she was a woman, you know, she was that psychedelic hippie with that amazing voice. But, you know, now it was the eighties and she's older and wiser and she's a mother and, and it was kind of cool. And I mean, I know Paul Kantner, was pissed off and he left the band you know because of this album but like it was a new chapter and like the it, it just the songs are so thrilling and peppy and I like that I like that like drum machine sound those drum pads and I love the keyboards it's just like I said it really complements the melodies of the song and it, you know uh I I just dig it and I and like Sarah what a beautiful, what a beautiful ballad. And, you know, it just makes me, even the opening to the video of We Built This City is just like, uh, like hillside and birds chirping and, you know, the sun coming up. And you know what? They did build this, build that city. I mean, San Francisco. Yes, they was, did. That was Grace's domain, you know, and I feel bad that Kantner felt like he had a split, but like it was a new chapter and it was a new positive vibe. And I really dug it. I remember like driving around in the summertime, you know, getting ready to go to the fair and 
you know, before we got all like meddled out, we just really wanted that uplifting, you know, smile. And that was knee deep in the hoopla. Cause like I said, have them, nice. <laughs> you know, like my, listen, I think we're, I'm still knee deep. That band, that band is way me. better. And, you know, I mean, uh, take no uh, Jefferson Starship or Jefferson Airplane, you know, just Starship, simple, classic. Right. The best. And Mickey Thomas sounds so good. One of the great vocal duets ever. Mickey and Grace. Yeah, him and Grace really play on it. Nothing's going to stop us now. I'm not seeing any downsides here. I'm really not. No. A lot of facts are being spoken. A lot of hard truths coming out. I'm going to fire up as soon as this is over. Yeah, Peter Wolf is on it. And uh, like I said, Bernie Taupin wrote some lyrics. And Grace really comes into her own you know uh with nothing gonna stop us like good pick karen good pick. well that's on a that's different good album but you know we'll, we'll she's really mature. Here, you know we know we know, we know. <laughs> that's right. a great transition from the 60s up to the 80s like she she went right into it and she was on top of the like heat there in the 80s so it's good that she was able to transition <laughs> the whole style like that you know easily yeah, yeah her look everything because i think you All know about the transitioning ship. Starship Band was kind of like a, a really good pop band. They did some new wave. And in the 70s, they did the hard rock, you know, and then the 60s was the psychedelic. So Grace and Company just kind of like every decade were like, all right, we're ready for this. We can nail this, right? Just, yeah. Uh, Peter, yeah. I think you and I did a show on Starship. We did. Yeah. You guys, a couple yeah. years ago. Yeah. And, yeah. and that song, Sarah, is way better than Jane. So I'm going to take, I'm going to pick Sarah over Jane anytime with the. Yeah. With, yeah. With, with, so like. Um, yeah, I feel like I could listen to Circle Jerks or SOD or whatever and Starship because, you know, like I said, I I I'd get that real positive, happy feeling. I mean, like Blue Colt said, the cities were on flame with rock and roll. You know, it's destruction, but now you have the rebirth. Uh, That's you know, right, and, and you really want the rebirth. <laughs> build, That's how rebuild build the, city the city with the same thing that destroyed the city. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, yeah. It's the yin and the yang, you know. The hell, the Kantner. I mean, those the, drum, I like the drum sound. The duality of man, you know, the Jungian thing. You know? yeah. Right on. <laughs> I'm freaking dead. Yeah, it's a good choice for spring. It really is. It's it's good it's, uplifting. It's rebirth. Yeah, it's rebirth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's Phoenix Thank rising you. from the ashes. What is it like? A good rebirth. I am speaking of Phoenix rising. They flipped. Oh, look at that! Wow. That there's my Phoenix rising. <laughs> there you go. Right there. Wow. There you go. Whew. All right. Karen's like. <laughs> I know. I never knew you had a tattoo like that. Mm. That's a big sign of a fellow. Yes, ma'am. I got wow. a whole kitten caboodle sleeve. Wowza. Phoenix. Lindsay, My leg uh, is next. Merry My leg Christmas is next. Present. your Christmas mm. present this year, right? My Christmas present to me. There you go. <laughs> All right. Ralph, your album for spring. What's screaming yeah. bring on spring in your house? All right. So, yeah, when I was a kid, I, I was baptized and I was brought up Roman Catholic and went to church every Sunday. I had to go to religious instruction classes for years and years. I made my communion and uh, I was going even up to like eighth grade. I had to go until I made my confirmation. And um, when I was going to religious instruction class, uh, I would go with one of my good friends that also was a metalhead. And we would wear Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden shirts and Judas Priest shirts to the class. And um, in 1984, this it, this was 1984, um, the teacher for the religious instruction class had like a, a parent meeting. And one of the things he brought up was how this heavy metal was being a bad influence on the kids and stuff. And um, my parents ended up talking to another parent after the, the meeting. And they told them, my parents about this album that had just come out. And it was a Christian rock band or a Christian heavy metal band and um, that her son liked it. <laughs> so it might be a good influence to, to get it for me. So the next day I came home from school and my mom was like, I bought you a heavy metal record from the mall today. And I was like, what? I thought she was joking. And she said, it's in your room on your bed. So I went in the room and there was a bag, a record world bag. And I pulled out the album and it was a picture of like this earth that looked like it was exploding and it was a striper, uh, the yellow and black attack, but it was the EP uh, version. It was the, the first uh, 
print of it that came out. And, um, you know, when I first seen it and stuff, I didn't, I didn't know anything about it being a Christian. I thought it was cool with the yellow and black on the, on the logo. And they, then I seen the picture of what the whole band wearing it. I thought that was kind of cool. It was like a uniform, like, like the Ramones or something, but it was like yellow and black, like killer bees or something. <laughs> you know, it had some songs like, um, um, come on and rock and uh, loud and clear. But there was one song called the reason for the season. And every time someone brings up the seasons changing, I, that song just pops right back into my head. So I probably listen to it for, for like four times a year for the four seasons <clears> that we <throat> you know, not just like it's that mainly that one song that always pops into my head when it when you talk about seasons changing. Um, so I, I had uh, it turned out that I had this really rare version of the EP. It was only twenty thousand of them printed, and um, Years later, in 1986, it got re-released with a like a way better album cover, with, like all these missiles coming to the earth, and then there was the yellow and black throughout the whole thing, a lot cooler. But by that time, I I was really into like Slayer and the heavy stuff, so I used to hide my yeah. away from the rest of my collection, so my my I wouldn't lose my cult credit with my friends and stuff, you know. <laughs> so I had it hidden for years, and um, uh, uh, one of my friends a few years back, he's like big in the ebay and like he's got his own ebay store and he just knows the prices of everything he's always telling me oh you know that that one record you got is worth this or that so he had seen that that striper ep that was really rare it had sold for like 875 bucks and then he said the next one he's seen sell for 825 bucks he's like yo if you want i'll put it up on ebay and you could try to get an auction on it but there's none of them up, up there right now so you might get rid of it right away i said yeah go ahead you know and uh he put it up as a buy it now at 777 dollars and within two days so nice was, and it was the most expensive album um that i ever owned that uh, i got to sell and it makes me like the album even more that i paid my rent that month with that so praise <laughs> the lord and, uh, where the hell are you living for seven hundred and seventy seven dollars yeah, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I know there's some albums that go for a lot of money, but it, yeah. it was like this weird printing and it was on like a different label or something. And then when it got re-released, that's the version everybody had. But there was only 20,000. Yeah. So there's over 20,000 Striper fans out there that really want it. And there was none of them up there at the time. So it was the only one. I thought it was going to be like a month or something and I would have to lower the price. But 777 was the magic number. And I got it within two days. You know, bad. I have from the Striper concert a couple of those Striper Bibles that they were throwing out when they toured. I'm going to save one just for you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. That's very nice of you. You got to admit that guy, Robert Sweet's got an amazing voice, right, Ralph? He does have an amazing voice, and he's a really nice guy. Yeah. Can't tell you how many times I hung out with him with Frank at the Chance when they played there. Great guy. Ralph, do you still listen to those songs when the seasons change? What's that? Do you like stream those songs or something when like the se when the seasons change? Yeah, like yeah, I pretty much I just watched on YouTube. Uh, even today, I was watching it on YouTube. <laughs> and every time the season that a lot of times I just hear it in my head though. As soon as someone brings up seasons, the reason for the season, that song, mm -hmm. boom, right in my head every time. Cool. I know. That's a good one. That's cool. That's a nice good story. One. Good one. Mm -hmm. Craig, you got the allergies going too, man. It's driving me crazy the last two days. Yeah, no, I uh, like my eyes were watering and I had to sneeze. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm yeah. fumbling with the <laughs> time of year. <laughs> yeah, I was outside most of yesterday. I used to Sunday. It's like a today. I just, yes. oh, it's crazy. It's yes. crazy. All right, we got some great picks here today. Ryan, how about yours? All right. So uh this this one's kind of dependent on my age here. So I'm in my early 40s. So graduated high school, 2000. So obviously I'm all into like, you know, same stuff. Ralph is naked. He's like crazy satanic metal. Uh, just went to Texas this past weekend and saw Sodom, their first U.S. gig in almost 20 years. Loved it. But uh, but by virtue of my age, when I was in high school, in middle school, uh, the big thing at that time was <clears throat> new metal. And I just, like anybody else my age, I just happened to pick up on it. Uh, you know, it just, it was there. I was the right age just kind of went along with it uh it you know now as we know new metal kind of faded off in the early 2000s it was from like 97 98 to probably like 02 03 04 and then it kind of 
kind of died off. But those those years were when I was, you know, teenager, graduating school. So there are multiple of those albums that are near, near and dear to my heart to this day. Uh, so uh, when you're younger, I think you, you're really kind of like when you hear an album, it really like the time and the place when you hear it really sticks with you. It really resonates with you. <clears throat> As when you get older, like everything, you know, time speeds up a little, things blend together. So you're like, oh, I heard a new album from, I don't know, Iron Maiden. You just think of it as a new Iron Maiden album. You don't really think of it as the time and the place. Like, I heard a new Iron Maiden album in the fall. Like, you don't make those associations as an adult, I find. But as when you're younger, you do. So it just so happened to work out that when I was that age, so right around, I'm going to say right around 2000, right? So 2000, spring of 2000, I'm in my senior year of high school. Uh, several of these albums were coming out. And so actually, you know what, my timeline, I'm trying to put this together in my head here. This is a long time ago. Long time ago for me. Uh, so the fall of 2000, right? I had just graduated and an album had come out, which ended up being one of the biggest uh, bands in the new metal realm. Uh, maybe maybe the biggest. I don't know. Sales wise, maybe the biggest. But uh, it stuck. It, it resonated with me uh, of the various bands that came out of that realm. And uh, to this day, it still kind of resonates with me as a uh, as a changing of the seasons album. So to include spring you know it's kind of like a rebirth and it just uh as we were just saying here so the album is <clears throat> hybrid theory by lincoln park the first lincoln park album which I believe came out in the fall of 2000 uh yeah now I, like i say you know usually the stuff i talk about on this show flipping tables crazy heavy metal <laughs> you know thrash metal slayer sodom you know autopsy like crazy shit like that but uh, yeah, that's not all. That's not all I'm about. Uh, I don't get to talk about this stuff a lot. But yeah, this album uh, means a lot to me. The style of music means a lot to me. And uh, these guys obviously were famous because they had uh, Chester Bennington did like kind of like the more crooning emo, softer, you know, emotional vocals. And then I love uh, Mike, Chester. Mike Shinoda, the other vocalist, uh, did like rapping. So they kind of alternated back and forth. They had a very heavy like electronic element to their music, which was kind of cool because a lot of the New metal bands did do that. You know, Limp Bizkit did that. Korn did that. Slipknot did that. But these guys, I think, did it, I'm going to say, the most tasteful. You know, had the least of the, because uh, when you think of Limp Bizkit, it's like almost like kind of like silly now. You know, just, you know, no one has like a positive um, image of them going back. But, the, you know, these guys don't have, they never had that problem. You know, it's kind of, I want to say tasteful. I guess that's just the best word to use for it. Uh they had several albums after this, Meteora from 2003. I kind of lost track with them after that. Like I said, new metal kind of died off. But uh, yeah, the sound meant a lot to me when I was like 18, 19. Uh, more of like a sadder emotional feel, which, you know, that's things. So you'll be starting to play that soon. Yeah, I will. Well, it's, it's, it's right now. Is that the album that, is that, the album that has see. the end on it? Yes. That... Yeah, so okay. this obviously, this has all their biggest hits on it. One Step Closer. Nice. In the end, which is I think their biggest hit ever. Right. That and, one, yeah. uh, crawling was a huge hit for them too, and they had other hits like going yes. forward, but I don't think any of them ever really hit that same level of like saturation that these did. Uh, yeah, but that's the thing. Like you know, I'm always what? usually talking about stuff that's like autopsy, like you know, zombies drilling holes in people's heads yeah. and smashing stuff, and I love all that. I do, but uh, yeah, there's like more of like an emotional resonance to this which uh, eh, I've always appreciated. So, yeah, this, this is definitely a change in the seasons kind of album, which since we're going into spring right now, perfect. So, yeah, this album does kind of hit me in that way. So that is my choice for this show is... Uh, nice. I thought they sang that song. I thought they sang that song "Butterfly" because that song's the balls. Okay. But but that but that's that what, is crazy that's town. That's crazy which, town. Same same era, that, same that year. Song is the balls. But that song's the balls. Yeah, the, I think it's balls. actually about the same. Maybe two thousand one. But yeah, it's right right in that pocket. You're right. You're I right. saw them at Oz. I saw them at one of the Ozfests. Crazy town. Yes, I think I was at two thousand one or two. Maybe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. My memory of that stuff's a little hazy. This many years <laughs> on, but. <laughs> yeah, that's my choice for uh, today. So if you're if you happen to be driving around uh, Orange County over the next couple of weeks and you hear that particular album really blasting loud around Stewart Airport uh, in the car in a car, it's probably coming from Ryan's car, I would think, right? Exactly. Yeah. Could as be. long as it's Could nice be. outside. I mean, as long as it's nice, and the windows are down. We're gonna have crappy weather this week, but you know what? It's kind of a sad album. So, but my birthday's coming up. It's my birthday month, and we're gonna have good weather at the end of the month. That go. would be nice. I would be okay with that. 
I hope so. <laughs> All right. So, you know, there's a lot of albums you could choose for this uh, episode here. And for me, there's there's all sorts of things I like to listen to as the weather's getting warmer. But, you know, you know, Ryan mentioned something that really hit home with me. Sometimes when you're kind of growing up of a certain age, music makes impressions on you, right? Certain music makes impression on you. And uh, so when I was a kid growing up in the 70s, I remember when winter was kind of saying goodbye and spring was coming in. You know, my mother used to always, you know, spring cleaning, got to do spring cleaning like every year. It's like, I mean, being a little kid, she's like, oh, next week, going to do our spring cleaning. So it's got to open up the windows and everything, change the curtains and everything's oh my God. vacuumed and, you know, it's stuff outside, planting flowers, all this kind of stuff. And my mother always liked to listen to a certain guy when it was spring cleaning time. And you know how impressionable you are when you were younger. So I remember thinking, you know, oh, God, mom's going to listen to that guy again. But after a while, I was like, hmm, I really like this guy. And I really like these songs because this guy could write the songs that make the whole world sing. Oh. Barry. Barry fucking yeah, yeah. I love Barry. Barry fucking oh. Manilow. Yeah. Barry. My favorite karaoke. A fan, a fan, a I Manilow. love Barry Manilow. Yeah. Manilow. I mean, Coca Cabana. Who doesn't love Coca Cabana? Nobody Ooh, I want to be friends love. with. Thank you. I mean, Mandy. Oh, Mandy's so good. And, and it's about a dog, too. And it's, that, that Mandy's about a doggy, you know? Yes. I, mean, you know, I love dogs. I always grew up with dogs, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this one's for you. Wherever it you are. Right well, it's going to be for <laughs> nobody, right? <laughs> exactly. My mother Coco would Cabana sing, she'd really tells the story. She'd be, like she'd be singing the song. She'd be the me, and I'd back. I'm like, yeah, Coco Ma, Cabana. we got this. Ah, so good. I mean, so of course, you know, my mother had the old LPs, right? Of each all of his uh, albums that came out around that time period. So you know, when I saw, like, I don't know. 30 years ago, I saw that Arista Records had a really cool Barry Manilow compilation that had like 20 songs. I was like, well, I got to go check that out because let me see if all my favorites are on here. I'm going to read them all off to you. Mandy, It's a Miracle. Could It Be Magic? I Write the Songs. Bandstand Boogie. Trying to Get the Feeling Again. This One's For You. Weekend in New England. Looks Like We Made It. We did. Oh, I forgot oh. about Daybreak. that. Daybreak. 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 Oh, Daybreak. Happiest song in the world. Daybreak. 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 I need it. Can't smile without you. Oh, oh my God. God. Even smile. now. Wait, I let's hang on room. to what we got. Is that on there? Which one? Let's hang on to what we got. Oh, Don't let go, girl. Oh, girl. You got a lot. I'm still hung up on Copacabana. That's not very manly. That's a burner. That's like... um. Frankie like Valley, right? Frankie Valley. Yeah. No. You know, like, that's Hang on. I think that's. You're getting your crew mixed up, Lynn, yeah. I think. Yeah. Lynn, I don't what kind know. Of I don't Italian think so. are you? You don't know. Frankie. I don't think so. I think you know, that's Barry. I can't, can't smile without you. I, I mean, think that's that just, Barry. That just, that just melts the blackness of your heart. You know, it really like, does. It's like, it's like the underneath Chernobyl, you know, when it melted through the floor. It's kind it's of like, like, yeah. like, yeah. like alien blood. It just goes yeah, right it just through. It keeps the going right through the deck, and you got to go to the deck below, and like that yeah. shit keeps coming through, you know? It's so positive. And like, who doesn't need that every once in a while? I mean, and there's more. Hold on. So listen to this. Somewhere in the night, ready to take a chance again. I'm ready to take a chance. If you want to run right through this wall, right? Ready now. to Chips. put my love on. I made it through the rain. The old songs, when October goes, right? Because you listen to that like after the whole spring and summer, <laughs> gone, right? And then Where's October somewhere go? down the road to finish it all off. I mean, every uh, song is on here. One burner after another. Down the road. Is that only a single disc? Our yeah. Gonna cross yeah. Again. <laughs> How can they fit so much goodness okay, on that one? I, I want that for my birthday. Better. Five physics. Yeah. I awesome. really want that for you my birthday. Probably find it's it like on Amazon. Real. Yeah. I think you should just give it to me for my birthday. But it's I ultimate like feel good. It jingles, I hope it's not gonna be part with that. You know, change the <laughs> curtains and clean the drapes and all that kind of stuff. It's just vacuum the staircase. You know, the fun part. Drapes. Nobody even calls them drapes anymore. I said that to my girlfriend. She's like, "What the hell are you talking about?" I, go, I gotta change the drapes. She's like, what? <laughs> she Italian thought I was talking movie. about something else. Clean the drapes. Got to go, 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 dust the blinds, right? You know, all this stuff. My mother would take the blinds down and put them in the sink. Totally. Oh, what are you yeah. Doing that for it's like, well, you know, but Barry will help us get us through it all. Barry, get yeah, you through yeah. the day, you know. You yeah. made it through the rain. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> you, you yeah. lost your youth and you lost your Tony, but you hopefully you have not lost your mind, you know. But I mean at, at the Copa, you know. That's I mean, right. It, oh, that's everybody right. loses their mind at the Copa. That yeah. song everybody is gonna be loses welded their in my mind head. At the now. Copa. I know. Yeah. It's such a good story oh, though. Well, it kind of has a kind of has a it has sad guns, ending. So. It has guns and violence and dancing, you know. Yeah. I mean built in lovers, it's kinda you know speaking of somebody gets killed. Yeah. I dig it. So yeah, so those are our, th just my pick, shot, and so we all get some great spring picks here, man. Amazing stuff, mm -hmm. amazing stuff. And you know, I, I want to hear a little bit from Ryan because uh, Ryan brought in spring by going down to Texas recently. I did a great festival. Uh, so did. Ryan, you want to talk a little bit about some of the banjo caught at this great? Uh, yeah, festival. yeah. So uh, let's open with uh, it's three. It was Hell's Heroes in Houston, Texas. It was three days. Uh, my brain's a little soggy on what band played on what day, so I'll go through a quick synopsis. Uh, Doro played uh, with Chris Caffrey on guitar. Right on. Did all Warlock stuff. Uh, no solo material, which is good because I don't Ooh. know any Doro solo albums. But I know all the Warlock stuff. She sounds great. She always sounds great. Doro always sounds fucking awesome. Uh, I have to eat a big pile of crow, which I think I said in the chat, because I have seen over the years many times Queensryche, Never, never gave the slightest tenth of a fuck about them. Just was never, never cared. Uh, but they played the headline the second night of the fest. Um, hello. Hello. <laughs> I just, I, I'll be honest. I never liked them. Uh, but they headlined the second night of the fest. And they came out and they did the first EP and the warning, and that was it. That was their set. That's so they amazing. Opened, they opened up with Queen of the Reich, and they absolutely blew my skull right off my head. I was standing there like, this is fucking awesome. Awesome. How good, how good goddamn was right it is. Yeah. Goddamn right it is. You sounded good. And you know, it's it's also like when you have a good crowd and the vibe's good and the you mm -hmm. know the sound's good and like everything just kind of like you know, have a couple beers in you, so you're feeling good. Yeah, you know, everything just came together, everything fell in place, and I'm sitting there like, man, this is, this is fucking awesome. They were really good. Uh damn right it is. I saw Sierra Thungol, awesome. I ran into Chris Reifert, uh, autopsy played. They had a slight delay of game because of a thunderstorm came through, but you know what? They were still fucking great. Uh I have a. Well, I like to say how many old New Wave of British heavy metal bands I've seen in my life. So I saw Def Leppard, I've seen Iron Maiden, I've seen Saxon, I've seen Angel Witch, I've they, seen Holocaust, I've seen Diamond Head. Uh, you, saw, you just saw Tank. Right? I saw yeah, I that. That was where I was going with this. Now oh. I have added to that list Girl School and Tank. I'd never seen Girl School before. Say, uh, I saw them with Deep Purple. They opened for Deep Purple. I was well, a joke. Yeah. So Al Algy Ward passed away a while ago. So it was not, he was not in Tank. Uh, so it was the Tucker and Evans second, because that's one of those bands where there's two versions of it. When not Algy passed away, there was only one. But it was one of those deals where it's like, it's the only chance I'm ever going to get to hear these songs live ever in any incarnation ever. So you just got to fucking, you get, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Uh, and it was fucking great. So to say I saw Tank, they played all the old Tank songs from like the first couple albums. Which a bunch of albums that those guys weren't even on. I don't give a fuck. It was all. It was awesome. Uh, nice. Uh, from Texas, the doom metal band Solitude Eternus, who uh, their singer Rob Lowe sang in Candlemas for a while. I like. I it. think he's kind of been out of the business for a while. So they they played their first show in like, man, I want to say almost thirty years. It's been a long time. Uh, sounded absolutely fucking monolithic. Holy fuck, they were so good. They were so good. So who's singing uh, for them now? Rob Lowe. Oh, he is back. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. His voice was a mess. Stop acting. So, also on the second night, <laughs> second night, no, third night, third night. Uh, this band mm. played on the. There's two stages. Oh, doggy, my dog's out there. Uh, Sorry. Never apologize for dogs. Uh, this band played on the inside stage because it was inside stage, outside stage. Uh, English band, kind of like one of those retro rock, slight metal bands called Witch Hazel, with a Y. Uh, so they are a gr great, great band like that, but they are a Christian band, right? And they all come out dressed in white. They look like the fucking Bee Gees. Yeah, that's their deal. But they still, <laughs> they sounded great, put on a great set. The second Witch Hazel finished playing this Christian rock set, we all went outside to watch Riding Christ, <laughs> oh. <laughs> which I thought was a very nice little uh, yeah. position. And Riding Christ only played, they also kind of like a lot of the bands at this fest tend to play like older stuff. So they did only the old stuff. So they come out, Archon, Sign of Evil Existence, all this great evil, satanic heavy metal. 
Awesome. The and right the after Ronnie Price. Lynn, the stuff that Lynn likes now. So Yeah, I mean, I'm actually a big yeah, fan. Lynn's and then uh, like, right after that. I'm them, just uh, saying, you know, you guys are turning me on to stuff. Who it's knew? good stuff. And Ronnie then the uh, headliner for the whole fest was uh, Sodom. And you could probably have seen that circle pit from the International Space Station, which I loved. As soon as they started playing, that thing just fucking fired up and did not stop the whole time. Tom sounded great on vocals. Uh, and I'm sure the there. astronauts appreciated it. Yeah, I was. It was definitely appreciated. I must have put my shoulder into about 500 people, which I always love doing. Uh, if I knocked anybody over, cheers. Uh, yeah, great time, great, uh, great weekend. Saw a ton of people. Uh, a lot of friends came down from Canada. So if anybody from Canada is watching this, fuck yeah, I love you guys. Uh, yeah, yes. I love going to Texas. Absolutely love it. Great, it's a great fest every year. This was the biggest one yet. Uh, gonna go next year if they have it, whenever they announce the lineup. So. Sure. And I understand we had a lot of Sea of Tranquility fans down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people came up to me, which I, I, I fucking love. I love talking to people from all over. A bunch of people from Texas, but people from, like, all over the place, too. And this is one of those fests where people fly in from, like, everywhere. Like, I would say a lot of Canadians, but, uh, yeah. Well, I'm of- going if Queens are playing next year again. I'm coming. They usually don't have the same band two years in a row, but. Yeah, well, if there's anybody remotely like that, I might come. It is I a can't lot wait for of- Sodom in New York. I am so excited. I don't want to wish the summer away, but that's definitely something. I am going to be very happy to see Sodom. I'm seeing them again in a couple of weeks in uh, Baltimore, too. So oh, very cool. I get to see Sodom three times this year. I'm very happy with that. But, <laughs> but that was the, the Texas show. Is like I think that was officially their first show since like 06 in these states. It's been a minute. Wow. They were supposed to play a couple times, and they had visa bullshit and immigration bullshit. Never yeah. happened. Uh, I don't know what kind of like fucking lawyer legal team they put together to make it happen this time. But as soon as we found out, like, nope, Sodom's in the country. They landed. They got through customs and immigration. They're in Texas. It's going to happen. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, yeah. And then when they started playing, it got stupid fast in a good way. <laughs> I can't wait. Stupid in a very good way. Craig, you were at a show. Thank you know, so right? much, dog. I'm, I'm sorry, you you left. I said, Craig, you were at a show. right? Like He's seventy-two pounds. What the fuck? Uh, yes, I I saw the uh, uh, girl school Lillian Axe Alcatraz uh, tour. Uh, it came locally to me in um, God no, it, uh, now I'm drawing a blank on the name of the town, but uh, it, it was about forty-five minutes uh, from me at uh, at a uh, brewery. God, why am I drawing a blank on the name of that town? Anyway, but. Uh, it, it was it, it was fun. I mean, I'd never seen any of the three acts. I mean, Alcatraz only had the keyboard player was the only original member, yeah, but they still cool. sounded pretty good. And their guitar player, his name was Joe Stump. He really was a, a really good shredder, like a Yngwie Malmsteen type type player. So that was good. Lillian Axe was kind of just melodic hard rock. Uh, and then uh, Girl School was just, you know, fun, punky songs. I mean, can't go wrong with... Uh, you know, with their set. So uh, it, that was, that was cool. And they were, they were really entertaining. It was the guitar players, uh, not Kim, uh, the, uh, the, the lead guitar players birthday, the, uh, the night that, that I saw them. So a couple songs in, they brought a cake out for her. So she was, so she was really happy uh, with that. And they, they, it was fun. It was just a, a good, a good fun show. And uh, they, they're like a female motorhead you know, just uh, with uh, with their songs and uh, and delivery and and style and and all that. So that was cool to see. Yeah, like Karen said, the only time I've ever seen Girl School was opening up for Deep Purple on the Perfect Strangers yeah. with the Meadowlands. That was, oh wow! I, I, I know Nick ago. saw the uh, same fight as I think in twenty fourteen. I'm not sure why I wasn't there, but yeah, I I had never seen them either. So that was uh... yeah. They didn't get a good reception. No, Karen, that show was forty years ago. Oh my God! Shut up! Don't tell people oh, that. <laughs> that's and that's what I love about the Texas Fest is that every band got a great reception. Every band, yeah. people were singing. Every single band that played, people were singing, having a great time. If it was stuff where it was like appropriate to have a pit, people were going crazy, but not in like a stupid way. Uh, yeah, I just it's a good vibe. Oh, and I, I did want to shout out to uh, my friend's band from Canada, Koshmar. They played their final show maybe their final show at that fest uh i know pete i know i've sent them or you you're a fan of them uh yeah just love those guys great set love always good to see them so uh that was definitely a highlight to be able to catch that yeah the, the show the show fest. was the show that i saw was at Bro- broken goblet brewing in ben salem pennsylvania <laughs> oh. 
That's Broken cool. Goblet Brew. And uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I, I didn't see anyone. Uh, I wasn't approached by anybody uh, there, but that's, but that's okay. So I wasn't as uh, recognizable as Ryan, but, uh, but now that's okay. But it was, but it was still fun. It was a really fun show. Cool. Anybody else I'm see anything over the last week? Out how to get... no, anybody else go to any shows over the last week or so? I'm trying to go to Conan and, and now it got moved to Queens, but uh, it's a late show and it's going to be hard thing because St. Vitus is having all these problems. They move this show to some place in Queens and um, it starts at 1030. What venue is it? I don't remember. It's like an art venue, kind of all ages, but I don't know if it has a bar or not, but it's a 1030 show and it's like, oh, I could hit up my ex and stay at his apartment, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just might miss it this year. I was, you know, oh, well, say la vie. I'm sure they'll be around another time. I'll come back. They're, Aaron, they're I knew I wanted to tell you something. Conan, I got, Conan I got my first two really? Conan CDs finally. <laughs> the one with the yellow cover you. and the uh Conan's balance. playing in Philadelphia, Karen, in three days oh. at at uh Kung Fu Necktie. Oh, okay. Um yeah, I think they're a band that they're one of those bands that they're really they're so much better live than it, I mean for me, I really have to be in a at a certain mood to put them on, but like when they're live, I mean ryan told me you know like you really got to see him live you know blah 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 and they fucking blew me away and i sure they're like hope... a wool sound kind of band right i mean geez. yeah and they're <laughs> not super slow i mean yeah they're doomed so they're repetitive but they're not slow and people they the crowd gets you know sometimes new york and uh like uh, the shows that i've been they can be kind of you know, they've seen it all, you know, even at punk shows. So it was kind of cool that, you know, they really got into it. The crowd really showed him some love and, and moved around and actually had a pit going and stuff like that. So I want to see that again. And I was, I thought it wasn't going to be so late, but I was happy that it was going to be in Queens because last time I was at St. Vitus and they played, it was packed and very uncomfortable and uh i was looking forward to seeing them in a, a different space but i can't 10 30 at night an hour and a half in that's the city and then an hour and a half back yeah, so that's his way Oof. yeah I'm, I'm being i'll go home with the sun i don't want to do that Oof. lynn ralph you got anything coming up no um, but, uh, when you were talking about the um oh i got tickets for that sodom whiplash and hyrax show but that's not till october I'm gonna to go to Uriah Heap and Saxon when that comes yeah. through. Yeah, I'm not going to do that too. Show. We're all going to that. I'm not going, going to with Peter. Show as you know, because um, I'm going the week before because the next night after the show you guys are going to, I'm going to Amon and Marth Cannibal Corpse and Obituary. So instead uh, of the two nights in a row, I got tickets for the other uh, show that's in um, I forget is where that, it is. Is that Long Island? I think. No, it's not Long Island because we wouldn't be driving out there. Um, it's, Jersey? Yeah, the one in Jersey. That's where we're going. I is guess. that the one that Rob and, and Al were going to? I, I I'm not sure. I didn't. I thought they. Were, I thought everybody was going to the same one. No, because Rob and Al are going to the one that's by their house. It's um. Peekskill. Actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Rob is going to Peekskill like we are, but yeah. Chris Chris is going. I think to the Long Island show. Because so. there's some kind of conflict with something else the night of the Peak Skills show. I don't know, something like that. Because they're playing all over the place. It's really weird. Yeah. A lot of shows. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, when I'm, is that Peak Skills show? In, I know it's soon. Yeah, I, I'm seeing the Saxon show in uh, Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania at Pence Peak. So hope to oh, see nice. anyone, uh, hope to see people there at that. Yeah. There's a lot what of going to see Queensryche. I'm actually going to see Queensryche a bunch of shows because it's my birthday month. So I. Now I have to go to a few shows, you know. They, they yeah. play the night. They play near me the night before uh, Saxon plays, so I may uh, grab a ticket to yeah. that. And I know you guys saw my picture. I hung out with Mark Messier. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Day. I was working. I was doing security at the Cap, and then he was there seeing the show. JJ Gray, who actually was really great, and uh, and then next door at Garcia's was. Um, another guy just doing this his single 
he was jamming and i guess he used to play for the bruins i forget his name nick somebody or something i don't know but he he did like all this fun dance music not dance music, it was like rock, but you no know, shit that people at my age that want to dance to. So we all went over there and partied and hung out and I'm hanging out with him, his hockey buddies, his daughter. Like it was just a cool vibe. He's a really nice dude. It was fun. Awesome. And I don't know who that JJ Gray was, but he was really good. He was good. Yeah, it was fun. You should have dropped it's the gloves fun. and say, you want to go pretty boy? You know. And... Well, I was thinking about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> Lynn, are you going to the Starland Ballroom Queen Direct show? Um, I don't I think I am. I am going to a bunch. I'm going to that one. My daughter got me tickets for Huntington, Long Island. And I think I'm going to Albany. Gotcha. Yeah, they're playing all over the place. Is anybody going to see uh Raven? Is it Raven at Star Starland Ball? Yeah, they're playing at Starland. Yeah. I'm going to that. I'm not, no. Are they playing with vicious rumors, Raven? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I don't have to pay for it, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Fun. Anytime it's free, you go. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's what's yeah. gonna happen. And I'm excited. My season's starting at Bethel Woods. I gotta go for orientation in a few weeks. So, and I think right now there's like <clears throat> 22 or 23 shows booked, and my boss was like, "Look out for 30." So I think we're gonna have like 30 shows at Bethel Woods this year. Anything awesome. good though? I mean, like, I'm not working. That, that I'm going Boger, with a bunch of women Boger to see anymore. Melissa Etheridge. Actually, there's I I heard there's not as many country artists and there's more rock artists. I just don't know who. I didn't even I didn't That's even look yet. Thing. That's a good thing. Isn't ZZ um, Top and Skinner playing again? I think so. Or, uh, probably. Yeah. And actually, I think I'm actually doing security in Albany at MVP Arena for Judas Priest. Oh. I signed up for that. Because the last time I worked security, they put me in front of the stage. I'm like, that's right. Put me in front. But it was funny because all you had to do was keep the people in the aisles and nobody was doing their job. I'm the smallest one and I'm the only one. Like, can you get the fuck back in your seat? And I'm telling people and the, the guys like that work Live Nation, they're like, you know, you're the smallest person here and you're the only one that did your job. The way it works. I right? think the people just feel sorry for me because I'm so little. They're like, and I gotta listen to this midget. They're fine. I'll go back in my seat. All right. For whatever reason, I'm <laughs> grateful that they listen to me. Keep those metal heads in line, Lynn. There you go. Yeah. Well, it's pretty funny yeah. when you're standing in front of the stage and you have Halford here, like doing one of his shrieks, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Robert Plant and Allison Krauss with uh, Dylan and Willie Nelson. Up there that sounds too. interesting. Oh, at Bethel's, I was playing. Yep. And um, good lineup. So, well, Pat, yeah, Pat Benningcar is going to be up there too. That's right, right. Pat and Neil. Yep, I saw that. Yep. Yeah, so that's that, pretty cool. John, so I guess John, I'm working John Fogarty cool and shows. George Thorogood. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right, Fogarty. And I think uh, did they book the Dewey Brothers there yet? Because I know they're playing up at SPAC. Not sure if they're playing. No, no we're doing some EDM festival, and then we're doing another festival. Who is Corey Feldman playing with? He's playing with some new metal band. I'm thinking about going just to see. Limp Biscuit, I think he's going on tour, right? Limp Biscuit. <laughs> What's that? I saw I think, footage you know of what? him playing at a club near near me in Reading, and it was, I, I mean, it was, I, I, everybody was having fun. <laughs> I mean, you could see that. I mean, he was, Corey Feldman's doing his thing and doing his nice. Michael Jackson dancing, but like you could see the crowd and it's like everybody was having a lot of fun with it. Ralph's right. Cause the last yeah. two times I saw Keeler, he's like, Scow, you're going to see Limp Bizkit with Corey <laughs> Feldman. So I know he's going. So. Well, That's um, funny. my boss has box seats and he's not going and he's like, he's offering them to me and I'm like, you know, maybe I'll go. <laughs> Why not? Drive. I'll it. drive. I'll <laughs> drive. <laughs> I, I actually want to see Blink-182. Blink-182 is touring again. Mm -hmm. I saw them last summer twice. They were really good. So go again. Why not, right? I kind of want to. There you go. Do it. What do you guys think about uh, Overkill and Anthrax are both got shows booked down in South America and Frank Bellow can't make and neither can Didi Overkill. So they got Dave Ellison playing for Overkill and Dan Lilker 
is in anthrax. So that. Oh, cool too that. good for anthrax. That's yeah, all. 40 years later, he's back. <laughs> yeah, he is too good for them. I agree. He's way too good for anthrax. You shouldn't be so we need a South America him. trip. <laughs> he's too, yeah, so I, I would distance yeah. myself from that band. I mean, like Dan Loker is just so much cooler than anthrax. What you say you, yourself. Ralph? Do you agree with me on that? Yeah, but it's kind of cool. It's like the SLD lineup doing, he's got to be doing all the songs. They should bring Billy Milano out and do a couple songs at, at the end of the night. You know, they love it. That Yeah, that would go over great, too. They would. Mm. Yeah, Billy Milano, where's he been hiding for the last 30 years? Holy yeah. crap. I heard I heard a rumor recently that uh, he's in like an SLD tribute band and he's playing gigs. They're going to start playing gigs <laughs> with like a, a tribute band, but with him singing <laughs> SLD songs. All righty then. I literally thought he was going to say, I heard he was in an S&M. I thought he was going to say s and I don't yeah. know why. How unsexy is Billy Milano? Like, there's I nothing know. attractive I know. about that I dude. I don't, I, don't imagine, I don't want to imagine I don't that. know what the hell yeah, I I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to burn this out of I've my I've been brain. up since yeah. four. I'm sorry. I know, right? It's horrible. Yes, as you're saying the words, I'm erasing them. There you go. I think, yeah, I think that'll, that's a great closing statement here for tonight's uh, <laughs> version of the Hudson Valley Squares tonight's episode of the Hudson Valley Squares. So for everybody watching well, it was nice hanging with you guys. It was great talking about albums that scream bring on spring. So you heard all of our picks. So for everybody watching, uh list yours down in the comments below and we'll see you back here in two weeks on the Hudson Valley Squares. Visit us on the web at ww.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube all together all the damn all the damn time. time. Berlin Versace and Craig Kaminsky. Karen La Preziosa, Count Ralphus, Ryan Scow, I am P. Pardo. April Fools, everybody. See you in two weeks. Take care. Bye bye.